This is the video lecture recording for Algebra 2, Unit 3.9, Nonlinear System of Equations. Okay, so one application of nonlinear system of equations is is potentially if a giant meteor is heading towards Earth. Oh no! All right, um, because a system of equations is is using one or more functions, or sorry, using more than one functions to solve a problem. Right. So, for example, in this problem, we could have a function that represents the shape of the Earth um, and how the Earth is moving, and and we can have one for um, representing the shape that the meteor is going to take if it's a take a parabola approach which it most likely would be right um, and if if one or more of these equations though is not a straight line then we call this a nonlinear system of equations all right and so so we're gonna make some parallels to what you should have already learned in uh, unit 2 with the linear equations but we're gonna keep rolling here um, for this one here, you should get a little breather. There's only one quiz, okay? There's only one quiz, so take a breather, relax, okay? We're going to crush it. So for 3.9, we're going to look at the study here, all right? So for this example here, okay, for this example, they're going to show you a video, okay? Basically, imagine if you worked for a daredevil, right? And you're trying to stage a, a trampoline to make sure that you can catch him. All right, so so the question is going to be is what shape is, is he going to take when he's traveling in the air and how are we going to be able to calculate where we should put that netting, All right? So this is another real world application of, of mathematics, All right? So um, before we do that, though, we're going to just review conics for like a hot second. All right. So basically, um, when we focused on on conics, right, or, or there's different conic sections, right? So if I look at the definition, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. Four conic sections. Okay, basically, they're curves that are the intersections at right circular cones, right, or double cones. All right, so so we have a lot of examples here, but basically there's there's four main types, and this is what they look like here uh, when we're looking at those cross sections. All right, but the human the the conic section that we're specifically focusing on still is the parabola shape. Okay, still is the parabola shape. All right, now with the system of linear equations that we already did, right? When we were looking at that, we had two or more linear equations and we could solve them by looking for their point of intersection, right? So graphically, what we could do is plot the two lines and look for that intersection point. We also figured out that we could solve for them mathematically and that's what we're gonna look at here. But before we do that, okay, how we could look at, at non- non-linear system of equations graphically so we could look at again graphing both of them and seeing what would work so in this first example here right there's multiple points okay with with two solutions one two where they intersect okay you can't really tell it's kind of difficult but this would be two parabolas with infinitely many solutions because they're the exact same parabola okay this one is a vertical line and a parabola so there's only one solution and then here's two parabolas that never even touch, so there are no solutions to that one. All right. Um, and again, you can do that for multiple things, not just parabolas, but that's basically, basically what we've been dealing with a lot, so we're, we're going to focus on parabolas here. All right. Now, again, with the linear system of equations, we were able to solve them graphically, again, by looking at the intersection points, or we could graph them by doing this substitution method. All right. So quickly here for the substitution method, you identify um, you identify a a variable that's by itself and you plug in the equation for that variable. Then you solve for X. All right. We plug in X into either of the equations to solve for Y. Right, and then we are able to figure out, okay, x equals two and a half, y equals eight and one half, right? And it's going to intersect at that specific point. All right, so again, we spent a lot of time in unit two talking about how to isolate that variable in linear equations. All right, and again, it is important to make sure that you isolate, um, if you can, the easiest uh, the easiest um, variable for you to calculate here. All right, again, it's really important which one you choose. Um, 
And, and for linear equations, it's, it's a little bit easier, but for nonlinear equations, right, they may not have any linear equations or they may have one. So if you're doing this, it may be easiest for you to isolate the linear equations, right? So if, again, if we're looking at a nonlinear system of equations, you may have the option of having one of those be a linear equation. If it is, you should focus on isolating that one because it tends to be easier. So here's a perfect example, right? So you've got squares over here and you've got um, variables on their own. So it's easiest to isolate y, right? We could then plug y in over here and solve, right? So that one's easy. Over here, okay, it's definitely going to be easier to isolate one of those variables. So choose that variable. It's definitely easier to isolate x by itself than trying to separate out x squares or y squares. All right, and then same thing here. Okay, you could choose x. We isolate that variable. We get a nice, easy equation that we can plug in over in our, our second one. All right, so if a nonlinear system of equations does not include a linear equation, Okay, choosing that variable can be really, really difficult. Like I said, it, it can get messy quickly here. But if there is something like a square or a cube, something that is in common in both of the variables, right, you can isolate one of them and plug in. So for example, here we're going to look at what it looks like if they both have squares. So for example, you've got y squared and y squared. So let's isolate one of them. This one looks easier to isolate. Okay, so when we isolate... We get y squared is equal to 3x plus 2. So we can just plug that directly in for y squared there, and it actually makes it a pretty pretty nice um, equation to deal with. All right, same thing over here. We've got x squared, and there's an x squared. So let's choose our x squared. We isolate that guy, right? We can plug that straight in. All right, same thing over here. We've got x squared, x squared. So let's isolate it, and we can keep rolling. All right, so... Um, again, this is just uh, another another understanding of isolating the variable. So if we have 8x squared minus 16y squared plus 4, if we're trying to isolate x squared in the equation, right, we just have to make sure that we start out and then we divide each side of the equation by 8, right? Not, not too terribly difficult here, right? Uh, only other key thing I want to mention is that when we divide the left-hand side, we divide the full right-hand side. So 16 is divided by 8 and 4 is divided by 8. All right. So then when we solve for the first variable here, okay, so after we have isolated, okay, after we've isolated the variable, we plug in for the substitution, right? We substitute in and then we can solve for that first variable. So great, we're going to isolate x. Okay, we isolate x, we have that equal to 2y. Now, we identify where we're going to substitute that in. So we said x is equal to 2y, great. So we're going to plug in 2y where x squared is, right? But now we have to make sure, again, you have to make sure you are specific with your parentheses because it's not just squaring that y, we are squaring the quantity of 2y. So 2y quantity gets squared, right? That turns it into 4y squared. We add it to y, the, the 1y squared. Right, and when we simplify, we get y is equal to the positive square root of 5 and the negative square root of 5. All right, so that's the first step is isolating the first variable. All right, then, okay, then we isolate the second variable. So how we do that is we take that first variable that we solved for and we plug it back into our original equations and we solve for the remaining one. Okay, so for here, it was easier to deal with the right-hand equation, so we plugged in our variable for y, and we solved for x. And since we got two solutions for y, we do have to plug in both of them and get two solutions for x. Okay, so x can equal 2 square root 5, negative 2 square root 5, or it can equal, and, and y can equal square root of 5 or negative square root of 5. All right, so this is one coordinate, x, y. This is one coordinate, x, y. All right, uh, and again, it's always good to check your answers. So by that, you can plug in your x and your y. You can plug it into your original equations and make sure that you get the same answer on both sides. All right, 
Also, we could look at the graph, all right, making sure that if this is my linear line and this was my circular line, right, making sure that those intersection points are what we calculated them to be. Here, okay, functions are usually set up as f of x, but remember, we know that f of x is actually equal to y as well, okay? So we can treat f of x just like we would normally. So for this one, how do we find the points of the intersection? You just set up the equations equal to one another because f of x is like saying y, right? So you set them up equal to each other. All right, now they're set up equal to each other. You would simplify, right? So simplify the new equations, and we end up with 4x squared plus 5x minus 9. All right, now that we do this, we factor either using our, our, our normal factoring skills or we can use the quadratic formula. All right, and I believe the answer should be C, right, when we, when we do either of those methods, whatever one you are most comfortable with. All right, and here is showing you if you just do the normal factoring. So we have 4x plus 9 and x minus 1, right? Then we do the zero-sum product rule, right? We do the zero product rule. Um, we have 4x plus 9 is equal to 0, and x minus 1 is equal to 0. Solve, and we get both of those answers. All right. Um, thinking about the solutions here, okay? So we could also look at this graphically. Okay, so if we plotted two parabolas, you can see where they intersect. And this one intersects at 1, 1. So the answer would be 1, 1. And then it is also down at this lower one. So that is negative 2.25 comma negative 7.125. All right. Okay, so those are the two solutions. All right. All right, so moving forward with the next couple of slides here, we're going to use our cannonball example um, to help us answer the questions here. All right, so there are a lot of facts to consider before making our calculations. So in this specific cannonball thing, fact one, the human cannonball will be fired from a cannon at the top of the hill. The hill begins to have a steady decline um, slope directly underneath the mouth of the cannon. All right, for every 20 meters of horizontal distance, it drops 10, right? So that would be our change in X over change in Y, right? So we go 10 divided by 20, right? 10 divided by 20, that gives us our negative one half, negative because we're going down, all right? The center of the cannon's mouth is four meters above the ground, so it starts off actually not at ground level, but four meters higher. All right, and so this is the equation based on all of our facts that represents the hill, right? We're looking at the hill like it is a straight line. It is at a negative slope, and it goes down one meter for every two meters in distance, all right? And then the minus four here because the cannon starts four meters above the ground. So we've got to take that into consideration. Right, so that is our equation for our hill. All right, now if we're looking at our equation for the parabola, right, let's, if we, we are given that, all right. So our, our cannonball, our daredevil is going to be shot out of our cannon, right, at some kind of parabola-like shape. And he's going to try to meet this vertical line here um, with the net. All right, so we have our two systems of equations here, all right? And, and you can notice a couple things, okay? You can notice a couple things. Again, we usually think of the x-axis here as ground if we're dealing with a, if we're dealing with a totally level ground. But now we said, okay, well, our ground is actually, our ground is actually this red line here, all right? And, and we started, okay, we're starting at our zero axis, and what you're gonna notice here is that the red line is four meters down because remember, our cannonballer is actually in the cannon four meters higher, right? He gets shot out, right? And we're hoping our, our trampoline here catches him right at this intersection point. All right, so if we were able to graph both of these, we could just look at the intersection point um, and figure out what the X and Y coordinate is for that, all right? or we can actually solve it mathematically as well. 
okay? So using the substitution rule, we're gonna identify what we wanna substitute, right? So we wanna substitute y in um, this equation. Okay, so we're substituting in for y. Okay, we substitute, we're gonna add our four to the other side, multiply by one half to get rid of this negative one half. Okay, so sorry, apologies. We're gonna multiply by negative two to get rid of the negative one half, right? So the entire thing gets multiplied by negative two. Then we're going to expand and distribute that one third, or sorry, one thirty second. We simplify, we subtract, and then, oops, sorry, I clicked too quickly. We simplify, we subtract, and we get our value for x. So again, just following our normal mathematic rules, all right? So now we've got our equation. We've got it in our normal standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, all right? So we've got it in our normal, our normal quadratic formula um, standard form, okay? Right. Now, solving this, we know plenty of ways for solving this, but first, it's easiest if we switch the sides, right? We're more comfortable with this. Now, this one seems very, very complicated since it's got that 1 32nd x squared. So it's easiest for me if we just do the quadratic formula for this one. So when we apply the formula, we plug in our values, right? Plug in our values, we calculate and we simplify, and this is what we're left with. We simplify further, right? We simplify further. We end up with 32 plus or minus 16 square root of five, right? So we'll have the positive version of this and we'll have the negative version of this. All right. So then what we do is we plug in and we solve for y. So we plug x back into either or both, depends on what you want, right? But we're gonna do the positive version and the negative version. So our two solutions are gonna be x is at 32 plus or minus 16 square root of five, right? And y is equal to negative 20 minus eight square root of five. And the second one is x equals 32 minus 16 square root of five and minus 20 plus eight square root of five for, for y there. Okay, so those are our two values. Now, when we actually go back to the problem here, we gotta think about it. We gotta think about this. All right, so if we were to look, our, our first solution here is our positive solution, right? It's our positive solution on the x. This second one, though, here, our second one, if we actually plug in 32 minus 16 square root of 5 in a calculator, it ends up being less than 0. So that's actually backwards here. So we got to think about it. This is where you have to use practical logic, not just mathematic skills. So if you got to this point, okay, if I'm giving you a specific scenario like this case with, with catching a daredevil, all right, if you propose this as a possible solution as well, you're telling your person to set up a net behind the cannonballer, and that's not going to end up very well. So that is no longer considered a solution when we put practical logic to it. Okay. All right. Now, remember that the origin is at the center of the cannon's mouth, right? And when we calculate those values out, right, we, we no longer want those square roots of, of five, right? We actually want to calculate out what those values are. So our value is approximately at x equals 67.78 and y is equal at negative 37.89. So 67 over 37 down, that's where we're going to place our net, right? And so in order to solve the human cannonball problem, we did these, these following steps here, all right? And the one that I'm going to highlight is determine which solutions made sense, which solutions made sense, okay? You have to use logic here, all right? Uh, we're going to skip this one. Okay, so a system of equations is nonlinear if at least one of its equations is nonlinear, okay? At least one of its equations is nonlinear. So then the next question is, how would you define a nonlinear system of equations, right? It is consisting of two or more equations that have two or more variables, right? We've got two systems, two unknowns, okay? Um, and, and 
at least one of these has to be nonlinear in order to be considered a nonlinear system of equations. Otherwise, it would just be just a system of equations. All right. So then in order to solve this, right, in order to solve this, okay, we could look at a couple things. So you can have something with no solution where they don't touch. You can have something with one solution where they only cross in one place. You can have infinitely many, meaning they're the exact same thing, or you can have several solutions, right? Multiple. Okay. So for these, a nonlinear system of equations is sometimes made up of only nonlinear equations. Right? Sometimes it's made up of only nonlinear equations. The first step in a substitution method, okay, so the first step in the substitution method is to isolate one variable of the equations, all right? And then if you have two equations that both have squared variables, okay, each squared variable has two potential solutions. So if each of them has, has a squared, you can have up to four potential solutions. All right. Now, again, making sure, please go through these. Make sure you understand what's going on here. All right. But according to this graph here, okay, if I don't give you the scenario of our daredevil, okay, this has two solutions. All right. I want to highlight that. This one has two solutions because it crosses in two places. All right. For here, if you could isolate, okay, isolate. Okay, you want to get y squared by itself. So just get y squared by itself. All right. And then for, for this one here, for this one here, you're trying to solve for x. Okay, you're trying to solve for x. All right. So that ends part one of this lesson, right? We will move on to the, the study guide and the checkups. All right, so for the study sheet here, nonlinear equation is an equation whose graph is not a straight line. All right, now in order to be a nonlinear system of equation, two or more equations um, are solved together where at least one of those equations is nonlinear and the other equation has to have at least, or sorry, and both equations have to have at least two variables, right? So two equations, two unknowns. Now for the solutions of true of, of nonlinear systems of equations, okay, all of the x and y values that make up the system are true and all of the points where the graph intersect in the system okay so for number two here for number two okay so this is just asking you to draw pictures right you could have drawn it with the parabolas you could have drawn it with the different different oval shapes okay but it's saying draw draw um, system. So this one has no solution because they're not touching. This one has several solutions because it crosses in multiple points. This one has infinitely many because they're the exact same thing. And this one just looks like it intersects at one place. All right. So again, the steps for substitution, you need to isolate. Then once you choose a variable, you either choose a variable in the linear equation or the one that is squared in both equations. Okay, then you use the inverse operations to isolate that variable, right? You sub in or substitute in the isolated variable into the other equation, and then you solve that equation for, for your missing variable, all right? Once you get your solutions, you're going to substitute them back in into the original equation, all right? And then you solve that equation for your second variable by doing your mathematic processes, all right, and then seven is check your solutions, right? So substitute all those solutions into every equation to verify that they are true and or graph the equations and verify that that, that is an actual point of intersection. All right. Now, this one here, I'm not going to walk you through, okay, but it's using the various steps above. So isolate, substitute, substitute, solution, check. Okay, following those, those different processes. All right, moving forward here, we will go to the checkup. Okay, we will go to the checkup. Again, reminding you, you only have one quiz for this one, so make sure you, you really understand what's going on here with these nonlinear systems of equations. All right, and we'll focus on the checkup. All right, so for this, again, we're going to do a couple 
of these problems together and I'll leave some for you guys to work on yourself. All right. So looking at this this first section here, it says determine the number of solutions the system can have of nonlinear equations. All right. So look what you're looking for here is the intersection points. So one, two, this has two solutions. All right. If I look at this one, it has, and by this one, I mean number three here. Okay, it intersects, there are multiple intersection points, so one, two, three, and four, right? So there are four, four possible solutions, all right? This one's really hard to tell, but it only intersects at one point, so there's one solution. All right, now moving forward here. It's asking us to isolate or write the variable in the isolated form. Okay, so I will do number number five here. All right, so we're going to write that in the isolated form. So what we will do here is first off, we're going to move this entire quantity to the other side. So I'm going to subtract y plus 1 squared from both sides. All right, so x squared equals 20 minus y plus 1 squared. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute that y plus 1 squared minus y plus 1, y plus 1. So equals 20 minus y squared plus 2y plus 1. All right. And now what I have to do is I have to distribute that negative sign. So I'm left with 20 minus y squared minus 2y minus 1. So my final answer here is x squared, if I combine my like terms, is equal to negative y squared minus 2y plus 19 all right that would be that would be my answer in my isolated form here all right and then if we do number seven write x squared in its isolated form well first step is i'm gonna subtract 4y squared from both sides 2x squared equals 40 minus 4y squared then finally, I have to divide by 2, but I have to divide everything by 2. So this becomes x squared is equal to 20 minus 2y squared. Or x squared is equal to negative 2y squared plus 20. All right. Ooh, apologies. All right, and then for the last one here, find all the solutions for x. Find all the solutions for x. So if I just choose to do um, one of these, I'll do number 9. Okay, so first off, I have to get all the variables for x on the same side and all the constants on one side. So what I'll do is I'll subtract 3x squared from both sides here. So I'm left with 5x squared plus 19 equals 54. All right. Then I need to get 19 on the other side. So I've got 5x squared is equal to 35. Divide both sides by 5. So x squared is equal to 7. All right. Now I have to take the square root of both sides. And this is where it might be lose you and I don't want to so let's make sure we're right we've got to have a positive version and we have to have a negative version of 7 right but 7 itself is positive so this is a real number it is not imaginary you could plug this into your calculator if you needed to all right but those are both of my solutions all right again not not too terribly difficult, hopefully. Um, there are still problems left for you to be able to do, so please make sure you do that um, so you can do well on your quiz.